This is the biggest tank setup I have ever done, not only on this channel, but in my life. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So if you haven't seen the first part of this three part series, please go back to last Sunday's video so you know exactly what's going on here. For those that are too lazy, in real, real brief, we are creating an invert home inside this tank today. We are decorating the tank today and it will be called the Forest of Pestilence. So to start straight off, I'm gonna show you everything that I've done off the camera so far, which isn't very much. Now this tank was gifted to me from a subscriber, Kevin, so massive thank you for this. This was completely free. I just had to help him shift it. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing 200 litre tank. Now what I've done so far is I've attached some mesh to the lid here. So this is one part of the lid, the vent holes, were a bit large for the animals going in here so I attached some mesh here and there is also a platform at the very back you see this black part going along the middle where are we just along here there's actually a hole in the top to allow piping to come through so I have hot glue gunned some mesh to the top of that as well leaving one flap open and we'll get on to why I left that flap open a little bit later so first things first for this tank then we are going to add a drainage layer now, although this isn't going to be a huge bioactive setup, I want to add the drainage layer just in case in the future we decide to change what goes in this tank. If I fail the invert, and some of the inverts going in here I've never kept before, so there is a possibility if I fail them, I want that opportunity then to change the entire tank setup. So by adding this drainage layer in at the start means that if we did want to add plants later, we can do. We also may add a few plants in just to see how they grow down the line, but we don't want this looking lush and beautiful and jungle-like because this is the forest of pestilence. It's full of decay and dying plant matter. At least that's the image I'm going for here. So first of all, let's get these clay balls sorted for our drainage layer. <laughs> now, excuse the lighting. I didn't bring my light into the bathroom. This wasn't large enough for all the clay pebbles, so I'm going to be pouring a few more into that one there, and then we are going to let them soak. Okay, I'm back. I'm a little bit covered in baby sick, so ignore that. Yeah, she got me a good one. Uh, so I've let the clay balls soak overnight completely uh, to allow them to absorb a good amount of moisture ready for this setup. So now we're just going to pop those balls in and then we're gonna cover them with a very fine mesh. And this stops all the substrate and bits and bobs falling down into the drainage layer. So here is the light of the tank and it slides forwards and backwards, but that's as far back as it goes. And this tub doesn't fit through here. Uh, <laughs> I did not think of that very well. Now I can't tip them from up here because this is a glass bottom as well and I don't want to risk cracking. So this may take a while doing it by hand. So I'll tell you what, I'll do that bit off the camera. So as you can see, we have the clay balls on the bottom. Now I bought a bag of 20 liters of clay balls, worrying there wouldn't be enough. Now I have only used about half of that, around about 10, maybe 11 liters of the clay balls, and we're not having it very high up. We don't really need to for any plants that we may or may not put in this tank. But we've got a nice even layer. So all I need to do now is just cover that with some really fine mesh. So the mesh I've chosen to use is this. It's actually a fly screening. You can use like weed netting or so on, but I chose to go for a fly screen just because that's what finance is allowed. So I'm just gonna adjust this into the tank. So I've done a bit of a messy job of it. You can cut it right to size if you're a little bit funny about that kind of thing but i've done it like this before we're just folding edges and it's worked fine so this is double layered doesn't have to be and then obviously it's a little bit scrunched in the corners but there's still plenty 
of drainage in that net for the soil to go through. And once we have the soil layer, you're not gonna notice all these lumps and bumps in the netting there. So the type of soil I'm gonna be using as a main base soil is actually a topsoil with no added fertilizers in it. I wanna put a layer of that in there and then we're gonna have some additives put into our topsoil to make a very nice and rich blend. Now you can see at the front, the thickness of this, obviously this was just half a bag being used. All I'm gonna do is spread it out, but as I spread it out, I wanna make sure that everything is still covered by this drainage layer. Now I can't quite reach to the back, so <laughs> throw it, just log it on. This will hold the edges in place. Once the edging is nicely in place, I can make another pile in the middle and spread it all out. I don't think that's something that you need to see on the camera. So I'll be back with you guys in a split second. So now as you can see, there's a reasonably even layer here and it goes upwards at the back. Now I know you might be thinking you wanted a dead look. You've still got an old aquarium background. I don't have the finances right now to be adjusting that but I think with that being in the background with what we're adding in, it still may work. Now I'm gonna put in some other additives. I've got a very reasonable amount of dolomite here. So that's calcium carbonate with magnesium. And then we're going to add in a reasonable amount of activated carbon as well. Now I actually blended this from pellets to make it more fine and easier to kind of place around an enclosure, like so. Whereas if you had the pellet, you have to do kind of a lot more mixing to make it even. So now we're gonna move on to the next ingredient, which is worm castings. Now I choose to do worm castings over any kind of potting compost. It has the same sort of properties with a lot less risk and a much more natural nutrient base to it. So of course, depending on what type of invert you're putting in here will depend on your substrate. I know I haven't revealed the few types of invert going in here yet, but just bear with me. You've probably seen, or you can probably guess that one animal is gonna be isopods based on the blend that I'm doing here. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that. So yes, one of the types of animal is a type of isopod, but there's something a lot more interesting and new to bug realms that is also going to be going in this tank. So to carry on, here I have pure 100% worm castings. So admittedly, I'm kind of guesstimating the amounts here. I've been making a lot of small ice pod enclosures, so I've kind of just gone with the flow with this one. I'm actually gonna mix it by hand. Grabbing clumps, I'm lifting it, I'm spinning it, and I'm putting it through my fingers. Grab, twist, lift, and fluff down, grab, twist, lift, fluff down. Then we do a swell, grab, twist. See, this is how I kind of blend mine by hand. There we are. Now it's only been a basic blend. You can actually see a tier of layers here. You can see I haven't quite got to the front. And that's because there are a couple more ingredients before I do a full mix. So what else do we need in our substrate then? Before we continue this video, did you know that Bug Realms is affiliated with the Spider Shop? So when you next need a stunning new tarantula, some healthy live food, well needed equipment, or just in the market for something unusual, please head over to the Spider Shop via my personal and unique link in the description below. This won't cost you anything extra, but it gives me a little back in return for your loyalty. Thanks guys. Now back to the video. Leaf litter. Now I have tons of leaf litter. This was all collected last year. It's already been sorted through. I know it's fine to use. I use uh, hardwood trees only, such as oak, for an example, but there are some other hardwood leaves in there. So as you can see, I've put it on the top. Now I'm not mixing this in yet because we also need to add rotten white wood. So, I have some big pieces that I'm gonna crumble up like this. 
but I also have some pre-crumbled stuff in here. There's more in there than it looks, it's just that I can't show you properly one-handed, but just trust me. I also have to apologise if any of this seems at all rushed. I'm trying to actually get this prepared while Theo's out the house, so that when he comes home, his enclosure is mostly, if not all, set up. There, see? Look at it all. For those that didn't trust me, there's plenty there. Now I'm going to get back to mixing this and I'll show you what the consistency should look like, at least in my opinion. And voila! You see how now there isn't a huge difference in the layer? And we've got all the bits everywhere. Now I've actually put both lights on here of this tank. Now I've pushed a lot of the leaves to the side, most of it's mixed in, but I've pushed a lot to the side so that we can actually start on the decorating of this tank. So we already have our main substrate build. Now I do like to add to my substrate as time goes on. But anyway, let's get to the decorating. So you might be thinking, what main feature can possibly um, show pestilence? Well, I came up with a little idea. Let's see if this idea will work. What do you think? Pestilence? Played doctor's mask? Does that work? I reckon it does. So, I've also got here a polystyrene head black as well that we're going to put in there. Now it doesn't matter if this gets kind of chipped away, eaten away, it just adds to the effect. So we're going to see if this mask fits on this head. Oh, it's a little bit tight. There we go. It fits on. Now I'm going to tighten the strap around here in just a moment, but I've noticed this nose stays a bit wobbly and thin. So I'm actually going to add a bit of the soil inside this to plump it out a little bit fasten it on at the back and then we'll place it in and here we have it nose is plumped out with a substrate means also if the animals climb inside the mask through the little gaps you can have them bury in here might also be able to see them through the eye socket so we're going to give this a center stage in our enclosure Right, excuse the noise, there's kids playing outside, but what do you think of that as our centerpiece? I think that looks better than I actually imagined. Now, I also think this is not too scary for Thea. Obviously, if you watched the first part where we were collecting the bits we needed, I did state that he's only a young lad, so we couldn't make it too scary, but I think that's really cool. And let's just hope that Theo likes it. If it freaks him out, we'll have to update you with a new idea. But what do you think? Can you imagine something maybe even crawling in the eye socket? They are see-through. Here's a look from above. So now it's coming to decorating it. So we need it to look like this is Pestilence's forest. Like he's almost coming through the earth and things are dying around him perhaps. What do you guys think? I'm just going to let the camera run on a time lapse. I'm going to play around with this enclosure and I'm going to see what I can come up with. Now remember if you haven't seen the first part to this video where I collected things go and check that out so you know what sort of things I went for and the ideas behind those and there are also things that I have already collected that will be added in here. I hope you enjoy this time lapse. And here we have it. What do you guys think of this setup? So what have we done then? So obviously we've got the mask, I've added two bits of wood either side almost to resemble shoulders. I wasn't really going for that but it kind of worked. We've got a branch coming here and there was another one there almost resembling arms, almost like he's pushing himself out of the mud. I've surrounded 
the main piece in moss all around and then we've got lots of twisted gnarly branches we've got some dead oak leaves still attached to a branch over here and we have some old dead ferns in the background so the look I wanted was almost like pestilence is coming out and all these things are kind of dying minus the moss because I think it's pretty what do you guys think of that now you have to excuse this light there is a lid to go on the top but I haven't put the lid on yet because there's something else I need to do do you guys remember saying I needed to leave a flap on the bit that opens at the back here well prepare yourselves for this so here is what I added lids on kept that open to allow one pipe specifically as well as the light and this is how it looks now we've added a fogger what better way to make the woods of pestilence that little bit more eerie than to add a fogger so as you can see the pipe is up there I don't plan on hiding it it's for a two-year-old I don't think it's gonna matter to him and it'll be good for hydrating some of the inverts going in here as well how awesome is that here's a view from the bottom sorry about the uh, reflection of my light you can see pestilence there coming up through the fog through the ground oh I'm satisfied let's get some side views as well here it is through the dead oak can't quite get round the other side properly but look at that and we'll finish this off then with a little bird's eye view how does it look through here there we go pretty awesome right now I may change this blue light to a normal light at some point but I don't know it kind of gives it that colder feeling which I suppose would be in a rotting forest perhaps so I bet now you guys are wondering what kind of invert is going in here well there are a few we already guessed isopod by the makeup of the substrate that is one animal going in here but there are two other animals that Theo thoroughly enjoys at least so far that I've seen one of those animals Stay tuned to next week's video to find out what the other two animals are that will be going in this setup. I am proud of this one. This is my first ever attempt at a tank this size, my first ever attempt at using a fogger. Oh, I am well chuffed. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have the setup for the forest of pestilence. I'll see you next Sunday for where we add the invertebrates to this enclosure and I'll let you know what Theo's reaction is too. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one, take care, bye bye.